Hey everyone, this video is about the sequence review in Remix Live. How to set up your own sequence, your own pattern made of the samples you use in Remix Live. I will show a basic groove just to show you how it works, how you can activate it, how you can create unique flows for yourself and hope you enjoy that. Let's dive into it. So I explained the loop view and the drum view and now we're gonna go to the sequence view. So here you see different paths lay out just like the loop and drum view but here we can actually create sequences and patterns and stack them up. You can see here different sequences lined up which I already created and you see also different colors within these sequences, those little colored balls. They correspond with the faders just below my volume. So these faders are connected to the samples within the sequence. Also, these sequences have different kind of length, but also like we still can activate drum pads in here. So I'm gonna activate them just by clicking on them. stop all the sequences by pressing on the stop button in the top. You've seen already a little bit how it works so I'm gonna maximize the screen and I'm gonna press open one of the sequences that I use, so this one. If I'm pressing on the edit button on the right side I get into a different view and here I can edit the whole sequence. Here we can choose out of different sounds in a pack and now I chose for sinus so I'm gonna show you how I created this melody and it's really fun and really easy to change this up so I pressed in some of these notes so if I'm gonna play it we can add steps by just pressing into the grid And we can remove them by just clicking on them again. If you want to maximize the screen, we click on the left little triangle and you have a better view. So I'm gonna go in the second tab, just in the top, and you will find here the velocity, offset, duration, roll, and pitch. So the velocity you can uh, change for each step. So let's play it. So you can hear already like it's changing the volume. If you want to go back to the original value, you just click twice on the same uh, step. And now it is back to the original. So then we can go into offset. So here we can change the timing of the sample per step. So you can create a little bit of swing even. Also this, I go back to the original value by clicking double. Then there is the dur duration mode and here you can find the length of the sample and you can increase and decrease it. So by just pressing these down, it just you can hear the little ticks. That's just because it just had a little piece of the sample and now I press it all down. Then we have a roll uh, function and here we can actually roll the sample so it sort of replicates itself. I can also go into the pitch mode and here you can actually find what I've done before. So I created a melody out of this sample. Here we can actually pitch the sample. So if I press new in, So you can create a really cool melody out of this. 
But of course, you can apply this to any sample, so also on the hi-hats or anything like that. Then we have also some general functions of this whole sequence. So we can choose for that it's looping or a one shot, then it's just playing once. Then we have uh, the gain, so we can put the gain louder of the sequence or softer. And then on the right side, we have a launch quantize. So maybe you want to quantize this sequence. You can also replay it. So if I'm gonna press this, an example. So it creates a different timing, or we can also change the length of the sequence to maybe 16 beats or four beats or whatever you like. So this was actually one sound, but if I go back to bass and mid, you can see I chose for two sounds. So here I just drew it in, but if I go to an empty pad and there's a record button, I can record it. And then it brings me back to the drum view and here we can change the length in the right top. So we can say like, okay, I want to have a 16 beat. So let's choose eight beats and then I can show it a bit quicker. We can use the keyboard for this. So we can press anything in here and record it or we can just finger drum. And there is a, like a little handy nugget here because if you're not good in that, like me, you can go to the top, go to drum quantize and I put here half a bar in. So I know when I'm playing and I miss it, it will still quantize it. And now I'm gonna record something. So go to the right top, click start and it will just start right now. So we click stop and then it recorded it. So if we go in right top exit, we click on that and go back to the sequence view, you can see on the left side where we had the empty slot, it just filled up now with the new sequence. And the good thing of this is, so we recorded it, but we can still change it afterwards. So maybe I want to kick on the one and change that up a little bit. So here we changed it up a little. So we can still change in here the velocity, offset, duration, roll and pitch. And we also can change the gain of this loop. Pretty fun, hey? So the last thing I wanna explain about this is you can see all these colors in your sequence. Those colors correspond with the levels of your volume down here below. So if I'm clicking on this sequence right now, So it divides it up into different categories. So your sliders will correspond with that. Then the sequence. So the sequence is recorded, but where can you find it? So in the right bottom, you have the file, your folders, and I'm clicking on that. And then I'm going to my collection, all sequences. And I'm gonna find this sequence in here, which is sequence three. And you can find here all the information about it. And also you can change the name in here. So maybe I want to call it uh, breaks. I click OK and now you can see it's changing into breaks. You can load here also different sequences like this 
but you also can unload them if you don't want to use them anymore. You also can copy them in the field and paste them into a new slot. So you can create different sequences based on the original one. And then, of course, we can play the loops and then we can actually combine them all. So I'm gonna play the kick, the hi-hat, for you to try it out yourself. So as you can see, it's very easy to get carried away with the sequence section. You can create so many patterns and it's so much fun. It is very simple to use and I feel like you can be very creative with it. It's a different workflow basically to make music and perform live. So we hope to hear your creations once you started to use it as well. So in the next tutorial, I will show you how to create a project made of AI remix stamps. So with this, I can explore even way more creativity and I will show you how to do that.